A big part of what we see in the day to day of talking with clients um, internationally um, is is a is a fundamental difference in in how we come to a final design of a facility. Um, the norm for the past almost decade in the U.S. Um, has been piecemeal, meaning a client will rent or build a, a, a warehouse they will buy a grow system over here that'll have a controller they'll buy some lights over there it might have a different timer or controller um the fertigation system some guys mixing it in the corner maybe or it has its own system the fogging system has its own um software-based control and there's no integration between all of the different aspects of the grow. Um, the other approach and the approach that we've chosen to take is the integrated approach where the majority of our work is in pre-design, design, and then engineering. So we heavily front load the front half of this process where once we get to the construction phase, that's the easy part because all the hard thought and hard work uh, has really been put into the, to the design to make sure that it's going to work when we get to construction. Um, we, we design it to build it. So we think about the cost implications of a design decision before we ever make, make the final decision, which direction to move. Um, coordination between di disciplines is incredibly important, especially in the construction phase but we deal with it in the design and engineering phase. So we stage the build, we know how it's gonna go, it's drawn in 3D with all aspects of the grow to make sure that one pipe isn't hitting another pipe, that two systems aren't designed by completely different people and when they come together in the real life, they're conflicting with each other, which we see often. Um, and an outcome of this is cost reduction because the build process is smoother um, and most importantly is speed to market because we are putting in all that upfront work. The build is usually quicker than it would be normally, which means you can get product to market faster. Um, we try and duplicate, not exactly, but as much as possible, uh, sys proven systems that we've come up with, um, and adjust slightly based on clients needs. But the goal is that we're in introducing proven systems that we know work and the clients can feel comfortable about um, so that when they start working, it's new to them, but it might not be new to us. And then we can work together to get everyone comfortable with the new build. Yeah. Perfect. So Josh, um, your background um, also leads into the design of these facilities, right? You talked about um, the, different systems and the construction, the builder, but there's also the actual operation of the facility, right? And you have a background in that area? Yeah, so I was a builder. Um, and when cannabis became legal in Colorado, which was the first state to legalize cannabis in the US, it was around 2010 that it started to get um, very real. For um, adults. For adults. <laughs> um, well, we, versus our medical programs is what right. I'm Right. Um, we started retrofitting warehouses. People were renting warehouses. They were just wide open spaces and we were starting to build them. Um, that I learned a lot there. And then that led to me owning a, a cannabis business. We had an indoor grow and a dispensary. Um, and, and those were, those, those were thrown together grows. Um, the lights were on timers. Each room had their own timer um cleanliness wasn't really a thing um water was on a in a trash can with a pump in it you know and and while that is mostly gone today remnants of that still exist um and i think we see it we see people who have humidifiers are going and dehumidifiers 
fires are running at the same time. Um, and, and as this industry matures, the people who survive are the ones who grow high quality product and who grow it efficiently. And so we've seen this integration uh, is necessary for the plants because you have healthier plants with, with an integrated system. And most importantly, because only the good product sells. And if you don't have the good product, then you don't have a business. Well, well said. Um, I think I want to throw a couple of other thoughts out there, um, kind of you know, listening to you. Um, we've been in this business um, si since 2011, and then again on the, on the cannabis side since 2015. Um, but our focus has always been the same, which was um, first focused on the environment. How do you create an environment that can actually, where you can grow year round at a much lower energy cost or um, CO2 impact to the environment? And so the, the point is that um, from there and from then figuring out all the mistakes that other people were making and that we were making at that time as well, to where we are today took us a long time. Um, and that time is spent in trying to figure out how to make that environment run better. Um, what does the plant actually need? What systems are out there that are working? And wherever there are systems out there that are not working or where we can't find the right systems, we've actually developed our own. Um, so we've come up with um, a, an integrated system that for um, where we are today is not a copy like Josh said earlier. Um, we allow for input from the customer. So your grow system, how your grow method, we design around that. The HVAC system, the controller, that comes from us because those are the pieces that are already designed with the facility at the lowest uh, cost of operation um, and the complete control of the environment in mind. So just a couple of um, thoughts there. The other thing is we're building a couple of facilities actually right now this year in, uh, in the U.S., there's, um, there's one in California, there's one in Colorado, there are two in Massachusetts, and there's a couple others that are coming. Um, this is the, I wanna call this actually the sealed version of our greenhouse version two, because it took us this long to get to this point. Um, so it's super exciting. And um, one more thing that when Josh mentioned, it's, the, the goal is to bring down the cost measured by um, utility cost per gram or even overall operational cost per gram. So if you include um, labor cost and you include automation to reduce that labor cost, a way to bring that down is actually not just focused on bringing the cost down, but also increasing the yields, which is the grams, right? So if you bring the yields up, your measure in um, cost per gram will actually also go down. So we are focusing on both sides. And I think that's, a, that's just another piece that um, I wanted to highlight. So beyond the build and the facility, Another important aspect is on the operational side. And we, like most um, design or greenhouse companies, are not um, operators of these facilities. We work with our operators, with our clients, and we stay engaged with them beyond the project of building the facility through the tuning of the environment. And I think this is, again, one thing that we've learned over time. And um, for the people that are new to cannabis or new to growing, these facilities, you don't just buy them and turn them on at the end. There is a tuning process involved. And that tuning process takes time, typically years. And that tuning process involves not just tuning the environment, but also tuning um, the genetics. What are you growing? What 
type um, of genetics are you using, which works best in that environment, in your location for your grow method. And then over time, tuning those genetics with a geneticist um, in-house or externally together with um, the recipes and the standard operating procedures and making those changes. And in that regard, we are there to work with you to tune that environment over time as well. Chris, I love that word tuning. Um, and I think, you know, any new business is going to need tuning. And it's a lot easier when you have organized access to the experience, also known as data. And so that's a big part of the SunSense controller that we use at Ceres and, and any CEA environment needs a good controller. And there's one component of the controller is to control but then also getting the feedback on what's happening in the environment and having that data and being able to analyze it in like a timely manner and in an effective way too. So the more systems that you can look at at once and see how those variables are working together, uh, the more effective that will be. Perfect, so we move on. Do we want to run through this um, utility cost and savings real quick or do you think? Oh. We've been staring at it long enough. <laughs> I think uh, we can maybe maybe sh quickly. Yeah, I, I I mean I think the big takeaway here is um, we made we built this example at twelve cents um, per kilowatt hour, which is what we pay commercially in Boulder County uh, in Colorado, um, and the idea here to show you is that. The utility cost per pound to grow in the facility that I'm actually floating in right now, potentially something like this would be nine ish dollars a pound, you know, give or take 20%. Um, but you could give or take 100% of that point. It's a really great number um, for utility costs for a pound of cannabis. Um, the value of a pound of cannabis in the US could be anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars a pound, depending on which market you're in. Each one of our states has a different market. Um, the idea here is just to show you that if done well and if thought through thoroughly, um, cannabis production in a sealed greenhouse facility can be highly lucrative. Um, and and our goal is to grow the highest quality plants with the lowest uh, operating inputs. And this is where it hashes out in, in the math. And I think it's important to, to see that.